and welcome to the Dead Trader Podcast. My name is Sean, and joining me, kind of as always, is Lucas between us. Lucas, how are you? Hi, Sean. I'm pretty good. How are you? <laughs> good, mate. This is the, the last week we need to, or potentially the last week we need to replace Dante. So thanks again for coming on. Uh, do you want to go through the uh, what the housekeeping, or just get straight into the straight into the intro? The housekeeping. What makes the housekeeping? Where can you oh, get me. your podcast? Ah, uh, Spotify. Yeah. Oh, cool. All right. Anyway. Um, links bio. Um, so, what did you do last night? Man, I've honestly been busy, but I actually have a question. Is Dante gonna? Are you? What percentage is it? He's gonna record next week. Or is it like I haven't, I haven't spoken to him about it yet, day to day. Yeah. Um, he's reevaluated in four days, mm. so he's gonna get off a flight on Wednesday, day or night. So, I don't know, man. I, I don't. I, I'm gonna say like. 10% chance he comes on next week okay so if you had to bet your life on it you would say he's not going to come on yeah yeah. But even okay. if I had to bet money on it I would say he's not going to come on but your life <laughs> I think I think I think he won't yeah fair he enough he, he'll, be, he'll be jet lagged and he'll have family to say oh you just know he's got like plans <laughs> <laughs> he's such a fucking plan cunt um, well there you go little E on this episode um, but what did you do last night uh, it's actually funny you should ask me, Sean. We hung out, so I'm not really exactly sure why you're asking. Oops. Um, but we hung out. We were we were just like mucking around for quite a while, talking about making a. Can I can I say it? Yeah, yeah, it's out. We were, we were, <laughs> that's true. <laughs> we were talking about making a hot sauce for months. Mm. I, months? I, I think it was over twelve months. I, oh, I was thinking about it. It was over twelve oh, no months. Shitting. Yeah. Well, what, when did when did we get the first mock up label? Oh, I'd have to go back through the, the through the fill airs, also as files. Um, <laughs> I think it was twelve months ago because I was in oh. my I was in my other house, which would have almost be twelve months ago. That is in fucking insane. I thought we I thought, but it really took traction about a month or two ago. Yeah, well, let's just say that we've we've made new merch for the podcast. You both yours and mine, JVG and the Attribute Show and the Deep Two. And this merch is, uh, it's not your mum and pop's merch. This is yeah. hot sauce. Um, <laughs> friend of the program, friend of both programs, Alessio Conte is a absolute whiz in the mm. kitchen. Yeah. Um, and he put together some peach and habanero hot sauce, which we have fuck tons of jars. It's so cool. We've all got, you know, just a little bit of BTS, but you and I have a couple of squeezy bottles just for ourselves. <laughs> um, but yeah, peach and habanero hot sauce goes fucking incredibly on almost all Mexican food. Um, <laughs> I'll actually read it from the chef's head. He said, uh, so I said, oh, we're going to talk about this on the pod, so how would you recommend people eat it? And he goes, any Mexican food, schnitzel burger, mixed with mayo, use that as a sauce. Mm. I'm, I can't wait to do that. Mixed with vinegar and oil for a salad dressing, chucking on burgers, chucking on chips. Um, and Marco and I used it on eggs this morning. Um, well, it was pretty, it was rather delicious. Yeah. Um, but yeah, we made hot sauce. It's called Heat Check, mm-hmm. basketball jokes, uh, a bun. About, um, fucking yum, man! It was so much fun bottling sixty bottles, sixty plus bottles, eighty-seven, <laughs> eighty-seven <laughs> was, minus five. Yeah, it was eighty-seven minus five. But what was that five? Was that ours? Was that our own ones? I think so, but I, I, I feel like I got yelled at for asking what the five was. So, yeah. yeah. Um. <coughs> so, also want to add to that list. Um, clear your throat if you, if you, if you so please. Uh, but. <coughs> oh, sorry. Took it to the office today. <laughs> sold five bottles. They mm. went. They went like hotcakes. They went like hot sauce. Yeah. And one of the buyers, Myra, used it on her salad. She said it was delicious with mm. the soy sauce um, salad what? as well. Wow. Uh, so maybe there's a bit of potential for some Asian fusion going there. <laughs> but also last night when we had the, the tacos, the chicken schnitzel tacos. <laughs> Uh, there was mayo in it in my one at least and it fucking went so well together yeah. it was so delicious um, <clears throat> cool no you keep going oh no you go you completely I was, I was just going to butt in to, to end it but you oh you, you were going to end it yeah. uh, well d- I guess we'll DM any of us or either of the podcasts if you want a bottle or a jar I I uh, we've sold a lot. <laughs> like we sold more, way more than I thought we were going to. They're going like hotcakes with hot sauce on them. Yeah, that's exactly what they're going. Are like. we like a quarter away through the stock? Yeah, we're just easy. Just over quarter of the way through the stock. So message one of us. You yeah. You message one of the pods on Instagram while you're there. Follow us or on Facebook. Um, message one of us. Reserve yourself a little piece of history. A little yeah. piece of deep to expanded universe history. Yeah. Um, Pretty cool labels on there as well, if I do say so myself. Yeah. Oh my god, we would be we would be remiss 
not to uh, mention the labels. Uh, our dear friend Sean Carroll um, designed the labels. Mm. And they look absolutely gorgeous. Uh, there are a few variations throughout the um, design process. I think they all look pretty good. I think there's <laughs> going to be... I think we're going to use them all. Well, if, hush, yeah, hush, mate. You don't want to... Yeah. Uh, oh, oops. Not to put the horse before the uh, the hot sauce carrot. <laughs> <laughs> Um, and also, if you're in a fucking merch mood, we've got a bunch of extra large shirts still remaining for the Deep 2, so feel free to message me about them as well. And hats for the Jeff Van Gundy tribute show, so Fuck. feel free to message I me. I feel like Hot Sauce well. is just going to... Like, Hot Sauce and hoodies? Mm. If it starts with H, you're going to go hat. Yeah, what about canines track. and cannabis? No, no. Okay. No, no. This is a G-rated podcast where I said cunt at the start. <laughs> <laughs> um, but we'll talk about actual basketball, because... We're not actually a hot sauce company that does podcasts. We're a podcast who made hot sauce. Um, (laughs) And I was thinking about topics coming into this episode, and I'm thinking, what's interesting about the basketball right now? And I'm sitting there, and I was watching Portland versus New Orleans with, you know, half of New Orleans roster sitting in Mm. street clothes. And I was like, that's what's interesting about basketball. The fact that I'm watching this sort of these teams play because it's just so important. Like, they're, they're a game and a half. They're two games away from each other, and the standings are just so tight. And I also wanted to do a topic where if Dante needs something to listen to on the flight in... Oh, that's so sweet. And if he's been in India trekking, going through mountains without any internet, and he's just been wondering what the hell's going on in the basketball world, I hope it's a good podcast that he can just put on and maybe sort of just catch up on the fly. Like, we can just we can just roll up next to him in our car. We'll open the door. We won't stop the engine. He can just jump in and we'll just drive off with him and he's ready for the playoffs. I like this idea. Yeah. So where do you want to start? There's obviously 30 teams you can talk about, but where do you want to start? Um, I actually want to start with a little bit of a recap of the season because it was pretty strange. I feel like usually by game 20, everyone's kind of sorted themselves out and mm. then like the positional battle starts taking shape Yeah. and, you know, injuries become a storyline. But I feel like the first 20 games of this season were so, were so weird. Like, there was mm. such a... <clears throat> it felt like a write-off at the time. There were still just so many unknowns. And then that, like, 20 to 40 game period of the season, each team then actually started, like, sorting themselves out. Yeah. <clears throat> and then I reckon probably the only piece of news since then in the last 25 games is that the Knicks just kind of turned their season around. Yeah. Uh but yeah, I just feel like this is not really usually the rhythm of the season. Definitely. Yeah. Def- definitely. Um, it's like the, the the closest pack I've ever seen. Like, you know, mm. I'm, I'm going to say it on the pod and I've listened to plenty of pods say it out loud, <laughs> but it really just helps to fucking look at it. But from the fourth seed in the Western Conference <laughs> to the, what's that? The 13th? Yeah. The 12th? 12th or 13th, 13th seed? 13th. There are five games separating them. Yeah, um, that's pretty nuts. Like, there's there are so many teams in there. Obviously, my Golden State Warriors are in there, and every game is just like it's just full on. Where Golden State's obviously having a very up and down season, but we'll just lose some random, really tightly contested game, and it's like, oh, okay, I guess we're ten. We're on, <laughs> we're on a three game win streak right now. Mm. Oh, okay, we're the fifth seed. That's actually yeah. extremely comfortable. Mm. Um, we played Houston the other day, and it's like. Okay, like we can't really afford to just have a bad night because if we have a bad night, we're back in the play in. Yeah. Um, we beat Minnesota and the LA Clippers on, I think, back to back or either two and three nights. Um, some of the fucking biggest, grittiest wins with mm. like a lot of Dante DiVincenzo, <laughs> like offensive rebound kickouts to Dante at his hit threes. <laughs> and it's like, oh, thank goodness. Um, it's just, it's just so tightly packed and it's so fun because it makes me want to watch it because usually I'd be looking at the the end of the season schedule and it's like okay well I'm not going to watch any San Antonio games because mm. while Malachi Brandon might be really cool just tell me next year yeah. um, <laughs> I don't want to watch Houston Rockets unless someone's gone off for 70 against them or something like that mm. but now it's like from yeah like I said from 5 through to 13 these matchups mean a lot and the fact that the Lakers beat the Oklahoma City Thunder today without AD LeBron or one other person D'Angelo maybe um <laughs> Without, without, uh, and they were down against OKC, but I think it was about yeah. ten points at one at, at one stage. Like the Lakers are now a game out of the play-in, and like, yeah, you know, it's just, it's just so interesting. It's so, it's so fun. Where, where do you want to go from here? Uh, do you want me to pick a team, or do you want me to just say, like, or what do you want, Sean? Well, I was going to talk about the Warriors, but I kind of did talk about the Warriors. Yeah. Um, there's, 
I don't think there's any way we can get up into the top four, even though we are only a game and a half behind Phoenix. Yeah. Um, they did add one tall tall shooter. Yeah, he debuted them. tonight as well. Yeah, what's it? Kevin? Kevin. He's on disjoint chilling. Um, so I feel like the, the top four is pretty set, which is yeah. like we just little fairy yeah. claps for the Sacramento Kings. Like they fucking, they were a top four seed and they yeah. were, well, their, their defense is dog shit. Um, they did enough. They did enough by having an incredible offense to be a top four seed, which is like, fucking again a little fairy because <laughs> you know how much the kings fucking suck um so that I, I've, I've said my bit about the warriors where do you want to go well do you just think that this is like i didn't i thought the uh i've always been kind of against the play-in yeah but do you think this is now the third or fourth season of the play-in and this, this will be is the third and this is like the biggest success it's ever had yeah like yeah. As you as you have kind of laid out already, um, the reason that we are talking about the relevance of a thirteenth seed is because mm. in the in the East here, I'm seeing that they're th- three ge- or four games out of the play in, with still what twenty games to go, mm. or eighteen games to go, and then in the <clears throat> in the right, mm. or sorry, the left, uh, they are two and a half games out <laughs> yeah. of the play in. Um, I I feel like uh, as well at the start when you said, oh, there's five games between the fourth seed and the thirteenth seed. Yeah. I've I, I've I've only ever like heard that part of it, but I've never really gone into it. Yeah. So I'm really glad we're having this conversation. Yeah. Uh, so is Dante when he listens to this on the plane home. Yeah, I know. Cheers, Dante. Enjoy the fucking free free um what Heineken yeah. <laughs> in a smaller can that you're drinking right now. <laughs> yeah. Why do they produce it in such a weird <laughs> such a weird <laughs> size? Uh, I feel like <clears throat> uh, in the West. I want to talk about the Utah Jazz, and I actually have a few questions. Mm. They're currently thirty-one and thirty-two. They're in the ninth seed. They lost to the Spurs yesterday. I'm on the ESPN, so it's updated. No, I'm just saying it was like oh, they, right, right. they lost a game to the fucking Spurs. Yeah, who okay. were on like a fourteen game loss streak or fifteen. Right, I thought you were saying they lost the game to the Spurs in case you're on basketball no, reference because no. it wouldn't have shown up. No, yet. No, 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 no. Um, what do you think they should do from here? Because they are. What eighteen games better than than those oh, than the Rockets and sixteen games better than the Spurs? Mm. They're not really in the market to get a good lottery pick. Um, yet there is still that aura of like, should this team lose as many games as possible? Yeah, yeah. I I I am of the belief that the Jazz and then in the other side on the other side of the uh of the, of the coin the Pacers mm. who are who are you know a bit worse than the Jazz to be fair, but I am of the belief that they are kind of building. A bit more of a steady foundation than those other, than like, or well not those other bad teams, but than the bad teams in the league. Yeah. And that they should just focus the last 15 ish games of the season on winning. Yeah. Um, am I, I crazy for saying that? No, I, I agree because like there, there's not enough time to, to mm. really come around and actually like get to, get, to, get to the bottom of the, get to the bottom of the conference. <laughs> Especially because, when Houston are doing it so good. <laughs> yeah. Houston and San Antonio are doing such a, like Houston have 13 wins. Fuck. Um, but they are 32 games behind the one seed in, <laughs> in, the, in the league. But uh, I, I, li- I like the comparison of Indiana and Utah because it's like, oh, should you push or should you like take the foot off the gas? And I will get back to Utah, but on the Indiana side of things, you are the sixth worst team in the NBA right now. They're half a game behind the Oklahoma City Thunder. If they lose two games, they're the fifth worst team, which gives them equal odds at getting the number one seed. Um, and for the for the just sorry for getting the number one <laughs> the number one pick. Um, and the Utah Jazz are just like. They're way too far ahead right now to actually yeah. like worry about like helping their lottery odds. For the Indiana Pacers, they beat <coughs> Dallas the other day and it like by two points and, and just snuck through against like a Dallas team that's trying to win. And it's like you like that really sucks because you actually while well, Indiana's had heaps of goodwill all around them all, all around their team this year, you know, they're re signing Miles Turner, it's look like they're they're happy to like keep pushing. If you just win just a little bit, you're so close to getting into those heightened lottery mm. odds to like really get a difference maker like that French kid. <laughs> but yeah, the Jazz are just the Jazz are just way too too deep in there. And for them, like the benefit here is that if they make the playoffs or they make the play in um, and let's say they come out of it successful. They're only half a game behind the eight seed right now, so they could play two games, um, and they could just like actually actually make this thing. And let's say they draw, I, th- I think Denver is just going to roll whoever they get in the first round. But let's somehow say that they get the seventh seed, right? And they versus the Memphis Grizzlies, who have been to the playoffs, but they're not too experienced. And all of a sudden, you get a team 
with you know Larry Markinen, Jordan Clarkson, you know Walker Kessler, see what he can do in the playoffs, and they're not going to win. Like I'm not mm-hmm. saying that by any stretch of the imagination, but just having Larry Markinen out there in the playoffs as the number one option, I think the the value for them there is. A, ticket sales, but B, if Larry Markkinen can put up 27 points a game in the playoffs and it's efficient, it's not like, oh my God, no one else can shoot, we better give it to Larry. If he can do that on efficient numbers, come the draft and then come the offseason, teams are going to be like, cool, we need a scoring mm-hmm. wing. Well, Larry Markkinen did that for the whole year. He was an all-star and he did it in the playoffs. And <coughs> I think the, the value for them there is if you can get Larry to show that he can do it at the highest stage, which is just the first round, mm. that, I mean, maybe his value goes up 20%, which might be an extra protected first round pick or something, which is like actual value they could grab there. Mm. Or just have a guy who they're more confident to build around if Danny Ainge wants to do that. What do you think? I think the second point more so than uh, using Larry as like a trade piece. Yep. And funny where we've come. Uh, <laughs> because, what, three seas- three playoffs ago, it was the other way around. The Grizzlies yeah. had the seven seed or eight seed. The Jazz had the two or one seed. Mm. And it was like, wow, the, the Grizzlies getting their asses fucking handed to them yeah. could be something like that could be really good for them moving forward, having this experience. And it has been. Like, since then, have they... That was I feel like that was two seasons ago. And then they backed up with, what, a 55-win season and now they're second in the West. And mm. they're like... They're like... If you were to tell me that the Grizzlies are going to be a top four seed in the West for the next five years, I'd be like, yeah, probably. Yeah. And, you know, that's... Like, I'd say, like, it's easy, but there are fucking teams like the Warriors or the Clippers or the Mm -hmm. Mavericks. Maybe the Mavericks to a lesser extent, but, like, the Warriors and the Clippers are very established teams with, like, very experienced players, and they're fighting to get... to stay clear of the play-in. Yeah. And the Grizzlies are just chilling at the... or second in the West. Yeah. So, I think, yeah, I think that the Jazz should be trying to get a playoff series into this roster... Um, and maybe that the first idea you had with Lowry getting an extra protected lot yeah just a little bit of value yeah. maybe that's for Clarkson or yeah yeah I can't think of another jazz player right now yeah well but another not one Mike Conley not Jared yeah. Vanderbilt yeah yeah <laughs> um, well the Clarkson perfect <laughs> and Kelly O'Lenny can start yeah oh yeah Kelly O'Lenny and Clarkson could net you another unprotected first potentially if you package them together yeah yeah um uh, if, if you had anything more to say there, please let me know. Not on the Jazz. Do you want me to pick another team? I do. Um, I was watching Chicago versus Detroit today. Um, yes. I don't know if you saw how that one ended, but... I, did, I actually only saw how that one ended. <laughs> yeah. Not um, good. <laughs> yeah, I mean, kudos to Jade Navi for, like, being the point guard on offense down the stretch against a team who's mm. supposed to be a playoff team. And, like, Jade Navi was actually, like, creating things for his team. Like, he was using his speed to get around his defender, dishing it off, or just going up to score. Um... Boyan Bogdanovich, another like fucking incredible game where it's like, how are you shooting above 50% on this fucking god awful team? Um, I should probably check James Wiseman's fouls because <laughs> everyone's been saying to me, oh, Sean, have you checked out um, James Wiseman? Like 11 and 11, like that's not bad. 7, 9, and 4, that's the fouls. <laughs> um, but every single time someone says to me, James Wiseman, oh, well, look, he's, he's doing all right there. It's like, ah, oh, look, at, look, at the, look at the fouls. Yeah. <laughs> it was 11 and 11, but it could have been 16 and 16 if you didn't get fouled. <laughs> yeah, but uh, I mean, um, fair play to him. We, we've buried the hatchet. Myself and James. Um, <laughs> he's buried actually right next to El Horford's sister's hatchet. Um, but so the Detroit Pistons, Jaden Ivey called a timeout um, when he was going to inbound the ball to potentially win the game, and they didn't have a timeout. So it was a technical foul and the ball for the Chicago Bulls, which yeah. not only got them the win, but it got um, Zach Levine a 40 burger. But yeah. um, if the Bulls had lost that game, they would be, I believe, tied with the Indiana Pacers which would be two games outside of having a top five pick, which are yeah, the, the lottery odds oh, to get a top the five way. pick. I'm going the other <laughs> yeah. way with the Bulls. I, the, this, this Bulls team just been very depressing. Yeah. I'm not worried about them usurping the Washington Wizards for the esteemed <laughs> a 10 seed in the fucking Eastern Conference. Right, pick nine, here we come. But the, but the Bulls signed Patrick Beverly, who you mm. sign Patrick Beverly if you want to win games, not to develop like you know your young talent. Um, and they brought in Patrick Beverly because they're trying to make the playoffs, but they are so close to getting that, that um, bottom five seed, which it's not a certainty, but if you can just get that and keep your pick this year, your future's just not as bleak as it is in any other machination of how this fucking team goes. Mm. And if they lose their pick this year to the, the Orlando Magic, like the Magic might get a top five pick and again, just like a Franz Wagner pick, so like the eighth pick, or maybe they get the seven or the six. Um... But it just sucks because because it is so it is so tight. These teams have these opportunities to lose, 
And like you said, Houston's just doing it so well. These teams <laughs> that are like, yeah, we're trying to lose. Um, Charlotte Hornets, who are going to be missing LaMelo Ball for the rest of the year. They're like, yeah, we're doing this. Detroit Pistons calling a timeout when you don't have one at the end of a game. <laughs> That's 60 chess, 60 <laughs> Wimbenyang chess. Um, do you have anything to say about like the the crapshoot that is the bottom of the Eastern Conference? Well, for the Bulls, like, why do you want to make the plan? Yeah, like, look at look at who's ahead of you. The one through nine seed in the East right now. Let's just let's just do the playing picture actually, because the top six teams, well, the top five teams are definitely good to great basketball teams. And the Brooklyn Nets are fun. The Nets is, are in sixth, and they're obviously <laughs> not as good as their record. Oh, that's not. But you know uh, what I mean. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but like. The future is so bright for Brooklyn. Miami is probably better than you, and you're both in like similar situations. We're trying to win now. Atlanta has been fucking trash, and they're 500. Toronto and, and you like I'm happy to factor in. We'll talk about Quinn Snyder later. Yeah, but I'm happy to factor in a bit of a boost where it's like oh, yeah. I've got a coach that Trey Young wants to play for, and yeah. so on. Toronto, um, who was supposed to be Nate McMillan. <laughs> uh, Toronto. Let's just call this like a down year because they have a pretty bright future. The Wizards. I think they're playing in Tampa Bay this year. <laughs> the Wizards uh, as resident Wizards expert uh, we're probably on the same tier and that's not a good place to be yeah. we've had Johnny Davis Rui Hachimura Denny Avdia were our either our last three no three of our last four picks one of them's a basketball player-ish <laughs> Corey Kispert was our 15th pick that was you know a he's good, fine yeah, yeah, yeah. Was, he's fine he's probably the best at his role like he might picks. play for 10 years but he's not starting in most of those 10 years yeah um and it's just like such a bad position to be in. I think like rolling out the ninth pick every year is just like, you're, we're, and we're not on the way up or down. Like we're so far from being good and we're not committing mm. to being bad. Just like make a decision, Chicago. So I don't really know what, what they're trying to hold on to. Well, let, let's let's say they, they win their next game and the Washington Wizards lose. So you swap out in that 10 seed. The bottom of the plane is going to be Toronto versus Chicago. Today, I would pick Toronto. I think they've got yeah. better talent on, on the floor. DeMar DeRozan's not playing basketball at the moment, so they've definitely got better talent on the Is floor. Is Lonzo? <laughs> like, who the fuck's Lonzo? I haven't seen him this year. I've only got a 12-month window of basketball fandom. <laughs> um, and then if they win that, again, you're you're playing the Hawks or the Heat, um, who are better basketball teams, have had more success in, the, in recent history. It's just not like... Yeah, the playing... Like you said at the start, it, it's making teams more competitive and we're, we're watching more games down the end of the season. But in terms of actually coming out of the play-in, in the East, it's just depressing. Like, if you win, you get to versus the Bucks or the Celtics, who are, like, two of the most well-oiled machines. Sick. Well-oiled machines. And then if you're... Like, in, in the West, at least it's like, oh, let's try and dodge the play-in. Because yeah. if you're the New Orleans Pelicans right now, you're hoping that Zion comes back tomorrow and you can somehow get the sixth seed because you mm. could probably actually do that. Um where it's like in the East, it's like, oh, can we just get in to the 10 seed and then sell some tickets for the 83rd game of the year? <laughs> Whereas the West, it's like, we need to get in here because like if the Lakers get the 10 seed, are they a chance to win the title? Oh, mm. you know, Denver doesn't want to face Golden State in the first round again. Like there's some really interesting yeah. battles in the other conference. Yeah. Um, but staying in the right just for the moment. Just I just want to get a quick word on you and the Brooklyn Nets. Uh, because I think as I was uh, thinking thick in the Middle East <laughs> that's what we call the middle of the East <laughs> very good get them all out um, I was thinking about the Nets today as I am akin to thinking about just basketball teams every day <laughs> but uh, they are in the sixth seed right now and I reckon they should treat the rest of the season like they are the playoffs mm. just so they can guarantee a, a, a playoff series mm. Um and honestly, man, if you can get a series against the Philadelphia 76ers, I don't think you'll win that. But I think you could take that to six games. Yeah. Like, okay, the talent thing is not on the Brooklyn Nets side. <laughs> but fucking nothing else is on the 76ers side. Like, <laughs> but, like, how many times do we have to back them and be wrong before we just, like, we learn yeah. from our mistakes? But I just think, yeah, getting a playoff series into this Nets team would be a good idea. And maybe even a playoff win mm. would be a good idea. But last, uh, let's figure this out. 20, oh, last 20 games of the season for them. What, what should they do? For the Brooklyn Nets? Yeah. Yeah, like you said, just go for it. And just, just know that you're probably going to make the playoffs. You're at least going to make the play-in. And whichever mm-hmm. team you face is going to be scared because you've just got good defensive role players. <clears throat> yeah. And you're going to lose in five. 
but you're at least going to win a game, sell some more tickets. You've just got this foundation. You can trade like all of their dudes whose positions end with an F <coughs> and get multiple first round picks back in return. Um, and just fucking have fun. Like you've just got you. You're entering the off season with every defensive forward that every single team wants, and then you mm-hmm. can say, okay, we're going to pick and choose which ones we keep. Uh, and just hope that you can somehow lure a star. Yeah, either you, you clear up some space to bring in a star, or you trade for one, or, or whatever it is, and just do this all again because Sean Marks, fucking, mm. we we worship the the, the, the church, the, the church of the Shawns of the NBA. Now the church of the church of Marks. I'm I'm like not as excited as you are in terms mm. of um, the Middle East, the Brooklyn Nets. <laughs> Um, Fuck's sake. but they've definitely got like multiple of my favorite players like I, I really like watching Cam Johnson Spencer Dinwiddie is one of my favorite players to watch um, and if Nick Claxton can like keep up he's, he's not that he's going to win DPOY mm. anymore but if he can keep up like a, a DPOY resume in the playoffs that'll look pretty good for his career yeah for sure and he's just like fully establishing himself as one of those Jaron Jackson Jr Evan Mobley <sighs> fuck I always forget one of them and, who, and I think there's one other guy in the league oh, that's Vic, like... Victor Wemmon, yeah. <laughs> for fuck's sake. What do you mean he's on the league? He's on the NBA app. I can watch all of his Metropolitan's that's so 92. Weird. That's yeah, so it weird. is. For, for a league that's like, oh, we don't allow, like, we're not like, doing any tampering. We're not really, like, mm. recognizing other leagues. <laughs> yeah. It's like, oh, you can watch the fucking French league, but only one team. Yeah. Who might it be? It's, it's so he weird. hasn't declared for the draft yet and they're like potential top pick it's fucking weird if ESPN does it that makes sense <laughs> yeah it's a broadcasting yeah, yeah. network the NBA has 30 teams yeah yeah That's... and also when it happened when they said oh, I got a notification I was like the NBA is going to be broadcasting Metropolitan Zoni 2 games mm. I was like I don't think I'll watch them have, I, you, have you ever watched one? no I've I watched, I, I watched, I watched like, highlights I watched half a game because I was like I, I clicked on it and I was like I wonder what this is like and I clicked on it. He was pretty tall. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, he'll be tall next year. I yeah. mean, <laughs> Steve, how you fat? Yeah. That's, uh, that is funny. Yeah. Uh, Sorry, Brooklyn, I'm just, yeah, I'm reading out his team, oh, teammates now. Brooklyn Kim. Nets. Um, do you reckon they're like a top five team you'd love to take over as oh, yeah. GM right now? Yeah. Top three? Uh, let me just look at the standings again. Um... <laughs> I oh, mean, before it, you look at the standings, scroll down. Perfect. Do you know what... No, scroll down. Scroll down. Yep. Yeah. What... Do you know how... What the Bucks win streak is? Yeah, it's 15. 16. Yeah, right. What the fuck? Yeah, 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 <laughs> yeah. Well oiled, well oiled machine. Yeah. If I could take over basketball teams in no particular order, it would be the New Orleans Pelicans, the New York Nets, the Indiana Pacers. Wait, 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 wait. The New York Nets. Sorry, sorry the, the New York um, Knicks. Knicks. The Indiana Pacers... Is that four? That's the, the the Knicks, the Pelicans, the Pacers. Knicks, Pelicans, Pacers. That's three. Yeah, I reckon Nets are in there, but, but they, they just four. don't have much of their future. <clears throat> like they've right. Houston, Houston controls True. their future, and then uh, actually, be, I'm going to take away the Nets because they don't control their own picks. That's cool. Um, and then add in the Orlando Magic because it seems mm. like it's just one really big. Fred Van Vliet size move that could just get everything going DJ Augustine and then my yeah fuck and then my fifth pick I will reserve the right to wait until after the draft lottery is announced before cool. saying the Charlotte Hornets <laughs> we can do a Mount Rashmore instead <laughs> um, I think maybe the Nets are not, they in your top five? yeah I think not owning your own future maybe makes it even more fun just for like, Sean fuck. Marks <laughs> well like I have to make win, win now moves like, no I, because Sean Marks didn't do that he just he just found value around the edges I understand that but if he is to make a trade moving forward it's with oh we don't have our own draft picks we don't have control of our own draft picks in mind mm. so it's like I gotta go for like good players and that has to be fun I mean what would be fun is just to call 29 other teams this off season and say what do you want well we'll give you Ben Simmons what are you going to offer back mm. and the answer is probably like Evan Fournier and a fucking pick mm. and then you go cool what's next <laughs> that would be so much fun you reckon and just because trading cause Simmons they, they said no well they said they said in the off season they're going to explore Simmons trades and if I'm them like 
just do it. Just do it for peanuts. Because yeah. like his value has only gone down this year since he started playing yeah. and then stopped playing because he's got an injury. Air quotes for the Patreon subscribers. <laughs> but just just to see like what piece of shit you can get back in return. Like, yeah. can you would the Raptors just give you one of their big contracts or like would the Bulls be like alright here's DeMar DeRozan fucking oath like that would be so <laughs> like good. what here's one year of DeMar DeRozan mm. I think that'd be good as well oh I mean just th- you'd just have defensive small forwards and Nick Claxton around DeMar DeRozan mm. that's pretty cool yeah I'm also loving Mikel Bridges on this Brooklyn Nets team yeah yeah well you can sign his brother as well Michael oh jeez <laughs> Who are you looking forward to in the West, or as I like to say, the Middle West? <laughs> the Middle West, obviously the Golden State Warriors. Um, mm. But, I mean, I don't really want to talk about Minnesota and, and Dallas. Dallas has been... I mean, they just made a major trade to shake up their whole team. Have they won since he got there? I don't think so, but Josh Hart hasn't lost in New York. <laughs> oh, very good. Um, I'm happy to move on. Do you want to talk about one more team? Yeah, I am, but I, I actually do have one more question, and it does involve the Timberwolves. I'm sorry. But is it now the marketing trade? What? The one where... Oh, fuck. He went from Cleveland. Yeah. Oh, my God. I completely fucked that. All right. You're, thinking of, you're thinking of Leandro Belmora, who got moved. He's <laughs> yeah. the European small forward. Trade. The Belmora trade. I completely fucked as, that. Um, the Walker Kessler trade. Yeah, my bad. My bad listeners. My bad fans. <laughs> Just apologize to Dante. He's, he's going to sleep. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, uh, let's, yeah, let's, talk, let's stay with the team in the left. Um, who do you want to talk about? Is, is there anyone really grasping at your heels there? I just there? told you I want to move on. No, but in the, in the, in the left. Uh, the West. The Blazers. All right, let's talk about the Blazers. Um, Matisse Tybal was following CJ McCollum around some screens and then jumped before CJ like caught the ball to go up. And on his way down, he blocked the ball, ran away for a, for a dunk in transition. Cam Johnson had this like little jab shake on someone and then step back and hit a three. And like when those guys hit their threes, the theory of Damian Lillard looks really fucking cool mm. because it's like you've just got really good defensive three and D wings. Cam Johnson? Cam. I'm struggling for names. Yeah. I don't even know who you could possibly be talking about. Cam. Come reddish, on. reddish. Cam Reddish. I'm struggling for names today. <laughs> um, but just the theory of putting that around Dame's yeah. awesome. And obviously him and Infernee Simons can't defend when they want to and they mm. really want to actually defend. But one thing that I really like now, now we know we've all seen that video where they talk about their zone defense and, and how they do that. And mm. it's a little bit hard without Yusuf Nurkic there because it is Drew Eubanks that they're funneling everything into. Mm. But they ran out of lineup with Tybal, Jeremy Grant, the two scoring guards and just a center in Drew Eubanks. And it was like actually a really good way to hide those guys where they had the guards in the corners just guarding the corner men. They had Matisse Tybal and Jeremy Grant up the top mm. just fucking covering what seems to be the three-point line with their <laughs> length. And then just big man in the center that you're happy to funnel into because you've got those two guys um, coming in coming in behind them. Mm. And I was like, this is a very good regular season answer. And it's cool that Dame just gets to sit in the corner, score 70 points. Today he had 40, I think he had 40 plus against mm. New Orleans in a loss. Um, and it's like that's actually really cool. They've done the they've done the right thing again. They don't have the assets to go and get like a premium fucking defensive three and D wing. But if these guys can just shoot, like the theory of this team makes much more sense than it did at the start of the season, where we were all quite <laughs> down on the Portland Trailblazers. And I should mention, I picked them over on forty wins yeah. um, with Dante, and Dante's like, "You're an idiot." They're currently twenty nine and thirty three, so I'm, not on pace, which is not on pace. <laughs> um, and maybe that's why I'm saying things like the theory of them looks good, <laughs> but it's going to come down to the wire for because it's not 41 wins. Well, it is, isn't it? It is. It's 41 wins. I don't know if they're going to hit 500. I don't think so. It's not looking good. <laughs> I don't even know if Dell is going to hit 500, and they're the seventh seed. Yeah. And we're talking about the freaking twelfth seed over here. Um, what do you want to say about the the Trailblazers? Well, fucking probably not going to get to 41 wins if they're losing to the Pelicans without Zion. Mm. Uh and Jonas Valanciunas oh yeah and JV not to mention nah JV and Nurkic uh, cancel each other <laughs> um, yuck that Tybal play at the start of the game when he blocked the McCollum 3 and then uh, it led to the dunk I was like oh this is why you get him yeah because like the 76ers weren't really playing in this season 
Um, but you just like when a guy can just be one hundred percent of two plays back to back, like the defensive <laughs> one and then the offensive one. That's like massive. That's massive value there. Yeah, um, and it costs them second round picks. Yeah, that I, I would be more than happy to give up second round picks for Matisse Tybal. Yeah, um, what are you going to pay him? I don't fucking know. <laughs> yeah, who fucking knows? I feel like did the Blazers have like two big win streaks this season? That the, they did at the start of the yeah. year, but I, I don't know about the the yeah. middle. I feel, like, of the season. I feel like recently, like the last week or two, they've been they've been pretty hot. But regardless, over this <laughs> over the span of the season, they're twenty nine and thirty three, and that's just who they are. Yeah. Like the same questions at the start of the season are the same questions now. The same concerns are the same they are now. Uh, and they are one overly loyal star slash superstar away from being able to make a decision <laughs> on yeah. which way they want to go with, or not which way they want to go, but just rebuilding this franchise. And Do you want to hear Dame's other, his most recent quote about not leaving, coming from Baxter Holmes of ESPN? Would love to. He said, quote, I'm willing to die on that hill, unquote, when talking about staying with the Blazers. We know. Yeah. You're, you're slowly dying. We're watching it. <laughs> yeah. And I uh, also, uh, quote, um, they better pray I don't win a ring in Portland, <laughs> unquote. Uh, don't, yeah, don't, we'll be right. don't need to be religious. <laughs> Uh, do you want to move on? Yeah, I would love to. All right, so news of the week, just three and a half pieces of news, <laughs> maybe even two. Um, but Quinn Snyder has signed a five-year deal with the Atlanta Hawks, coming from Adrian Wojnarowski of ESPN. Um, he's getting paid $8 million per year, which would make him one of the highest paid coaches in the league. Uh, he apparently has some sway in personnel decisions, which is something that he won a power struggle with Justin Zanuck, where he was actually the guy in Utah who was going to have the, the head decisions on top of their GM. Mm-hmm. And then they just brought Danny Ainge in and Danny Ainge immediately just said, no, you're not the guy who makes the decisions. Mm-hmm. Um, he is now, so like I said, he's got some sway with the Atlanta Hawks. Um, Travis Schlank was recently demoted. He was the guy who sort of was the architect of this <laughs> this 31-win <laughs> Atlanta Hawks team. Um he was demoted to a advisory role or a consultant, and Landry Fields was promoted but not in title, so they don't have a president of basketball operations. Um, and apparently, the owner's son, the owner is Nick Wrestler, I think, or maybe that's the son or Travis Wrestler. There's there's a wrestler, a someone wrestler who's um, Chris. No, I I honestly don't want you to Google the son's name. It doesn't matter to me. I didn't. It didn't. That's not what I was doing. Thank goodness. Um, so yeah, Quinn Snyder. He's he. It seemed like he was. His name was thrown into every single coaching job, but he yeah. just was never. He never threw his name back. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, he's signed with the Hawks, and he's get he's getting a you know personnel decisions, which might not be the right call, as we've seen with Stan Van Gundy, Doc Rivers, Popovich might be the only exception. Um, but good on him for getting what he wanted, I guess, at the end of the day. Um, another little quick, quick tidbit. He is, in terms of coaches getting hired from outside their organization in the middle of the season, he is the he's coming in with the third fewest remaining games. Oh, yes. I can um, see this. Just budging out Dick Van Arsehole. <laughs> um, so... Quinn Snyder joins the Atlanta Hawks with 21 games remaining. In 93-94, Magic Johnson joined the Lakers as their head coach with 16 games left. And in 85-86, the Washington Bullets brought Kevin Lowry Lowry. Lowry in with 13 (laughs) games remaining. You obviously know how to pronounce it as a Washington fan. Um, Other relevant ones, uh, the second most relevant closest to Quinn Snyder is in 2014-15 the Sacramento Kings brought in George Cole with 30 games remaining in the season Mm -hmm. nice little tidbit Mm. Um, what do you think about uh, (laughs) Quinn Snyder joining the Atlanta Hawks Uh, George Cole also came in another top 10 uh, performance in 0405 with the Denver Nuggets with 40 games remaining and then also (laughs) he's here again with the Super Sonics with 42 games remaining and uh, just a quick shout out to Billy Cunningham, who ranks dead last, <laughs> getting signed with 76 games remaining. Why, yeah. is he, why is he even on this list? Because he came from outside the organization. Oh, oh, that was that mad specific qualifier. <laughs> um, we had, I think the Wizards had the first game um, in the Quinn Snyder era in Atlanta. And not too... Was that rem- the buzzer beater? No, no. Like, that was against Brooklyn. I think... 
No, I think you, oh, were, you were the first oh. game, and then because remember when Trey double double pumped and somehow put the shot up. Mm. I didn't actually get this. I didn't actually. So he had a buzzer beater. That might have been the second. Look, I'm well, just no, going to make that myself been look the first bad. One. Okay, that cool. The first but anyway, one. so the you. The Hawks played yesterday. Your Washington almost bullets played them. Yeah, and we were we were up three with about with eight, with eight seconds to go. Trey Young got two wide open three pointers. I think Quinn Snyder is a great coach. <laughs> I don't think the reason that Trey got those wide open three pointers was because of good coaching. I think we would, maybe we were trying to lose the game, <laughs> um, but I think I think this is a good move. I think Quinn Snyder is a fucking incredible coach, mm. uh, and I think and you can actually hear this take in full over at the Jeff Van Gundy TV <laughs> show, which you can hear anywhere you're listening to this. But I think that NBA superstars are very worried about what people think about them, mm. and I don't think that Trey Young is gonna want. Uh, to be attached to a third coach firing. Yeah. So I think that there could be, um, by way of that, uh, like a buy-in <clears throat> to kind of play alongside, let's say, his head coach in Quinn Snyder. Um, and Quinn Snyder did, like, incredible things in Utah. Like, j- since he has left Utah, that team shouldn't have worked as well as it worked. Yeah. Like, the... Uh, you know, I don't, I don't, Rudy's fallen to, off a cliff. Yeah, but we yeah we don't have to go through who was on that starting lineup. But like Joe Ingles is just old when you think about it. Yeah. Um, and that team was like nowhere near as athletic to be such a good defensive team. Uh, so and and now he's got this like fucking young hot team. Mm. Um, ish They've no, I mean, I mean, it's just like fucking ready they're at to least go. young. Yeah, yeah, yeah they're like they, they got they got ath- I didn't mean, I didn't mean <laughs> hot. I mean like they got athletes on this yeah. on this roster. Uh, that are only going to get better. Like, yeah. in theory, are only going to get better. Um, so I'm excited to see what he's going to do. I think I think the thing I want to watch the most is what he's going to do with Capella and Okongwu offensively. And then also the thing I kind of want to just keep tabs on the most is what he's going to do with John Collins. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, you mean like trade him or if he's going to actually be like... Because he hasn't, he hasn't played with like a non-shooting four like John mm. Collins in, in Utah. He always had the luxury of at least good shooters around his star players. Mm. Um, but yeah, it's like whether this is like a Capella revi- uh, revival where it's like he's going to be more more featured as in you know, a little bit of a Rudy Gobert screen assist kind of role or if um, you know, maybe Capella is just old and Onyeka Okongwu is going to be the guy who comes in and can sort of realise his potential as like a, a go-to defensive player, which mm. I, I was big on and Dante was always a bit like, eh, I don't know, Sean, hold off just, just, just a second. Um... <laughs> Do you want to move on? Uh, yeah, two two quick trivia's. How old is Clint Capella? Thirty-two. Twenty-eight. How what? old? How old Damn. is Landry Fields? Thirty-nine. Thirty-four. Fuck. Yeah. Really. Landry Fields. I want to say finished his basketball playing career when he was twenty-six. Well, he got like one contract from the Knicks and then never looked back. When I went to New York City, hashtag City of Dreams. I got a Landry Fields warm-up shooting top while I was there. No, had you still have it? Uh, not his. Like, I bought one. Yeah, yeah, no, but you still have... It has to be somewhere. Potentially yeah. in a box, in a in a box, in a box, in a box. Lost it while I was moving. Now nah, good, I'm done for the for fizzy drinks for the evening. Um, oh, my God, it was 26 when he stopped playing. Well, Are we going to have an ad at any point, by the way? Uh, well, you want to have one right now? Yeah, I'd love to. Yeah, please. okay. All right, we'll just take a break. <laughs> The depth, the the deep, the ugh, the deep two. God, that's a mouthful. Anyways, I'm Marco, co-host of the. Hey, Daniel Gafford, what's the name of our podcast? The JVG NBA Tribute Show. Wow, I can't believe it's that easy. Thanks, Gaff. You probably know us as two members of the Four Man Weave plus Marco, but we know you as our next listener. Well said, Lucas. I got to ask, how do we differ from the pack of basketball podcasts? It's a great question, Marco. You see, on our basketball podcast, we have two male co-hosts. Wow, truly groundbreaking. After this episode, stay on your favourite podcasting app and give us a spin. Back. And we're back. Um, next piece of news is that the Rockets and James Harden are quite serious, unquote, about the relationship. I think that might mean <laughs> reunion. Um, 76 is a quote, unconcerned, uncons- uh, unquote, about free agency coming from Kelly Eco and Sam Amick of The Athletic um, saying that he's got a player option for next season is that is that correct or did he sign a 2 plus 1 he did sign that but could we already be there was that was that potentially 2 years ago well it, 
I'm just just bear with me. Okay, so he's got a player option for next season, so he can be a free agent at the end of this year. Um, <coughs> I will just give my opinion on this. Uh, you've already heard my voice. I, haven't, I actually didn't listen to that. Oh, really? Yeah. That's awesome. Oh, I mean, you saved it for this. Yeah, ah. it for the um, all right, well, I'll actually give you the full spiel then because uh, so there was a quote from Tillman Fertitta saying that when he traded James Harden, he said, hey, if you ever want to come back, you can come back. You can still be James Harden in Houston. We've always got a spot for you. Houston fans love you. Um, and you can always come back and just average 35 points at any time you like. Mm-hmm. Um, my theory on this is that this is Daryl Morey's grand plan to circumvent tampering because we saw that when he was like, he was up for an extension right after getting traded. And do you remember when they had that press conference the day after the extension deadline? And they said, oh, why didn't you sign an extension with Philly after like getting here? And he goes, oh, we, we missed the deadline. Mm-hmm. Like they just missed an important deadline. Um, and then he went into free agency and he signed this one plus one or, or, or whatever it was. He just, he, he signed this shorter deal or he picked up his option um, and that left them with enough space just to sign PJ Tucker, which I think they did end up getting. Um, they did end up getting fined a second round pick for that. So my theory is that the Philadelphia 76ers have sort of um, said to James Harden, if you could maybe chuck a few rumors out there that you're interested in going back to Houston, because that's believable. It wouldn't be tampering from Houston's point of view because Houston's just sitting there while James Harden says, oh, I really enjoyed my time in Houston. Mm-hmm. I, I could seriously think about joining them in free agency. They're going to have the cap space to be able to do it. Um, so everyone's going out and saying, oh, there's this big looming threat of the 13-win Houston Rockets that might sign James Harden to, to come over there because he just can't wait to average 30 points again and start taking heaps of shots. Um, and by doing that, they say, oh, the threat was real. You know, mm. we, we missed that deadline. We, we fucking slept through the alarm and couldn't sign an extension. We missed that deadline, and now he might go to the Houston Rockets. When in reality, he's sitting there going, all right, I'll just say that, and then I can just quickly turn around and race on with the Philadelphia 76ers and say, oh, damn, you know, I thought about going to Houston, but I'm going to stay here because we can win a title. Mm. What are your thoughts on that theory? But <clears throat> I don't get... I have a few questions. First of all, actually, before I had the questions, I love it, man. I love all the drama. <laughs> so, like, it's so fucking crazy what, like, the way that uh, NBA players, teams, entities within the NBA have have to act to go around certain things to yeah. avoid tampering, etc. Yeah. But why, why would this be um, Maury avoiding tampering? Because... If if there were no other um, Harden rumors, and Harden just did that thing where, you know, he signed for less, and then ah. they, they were able to sign PJ Tucker yeah. with that, um, and then they went into free agency. Harden declines his option, and then just signs a five year deal. Yeah. If they did that, everyone's like, oh, that's really convenient that you missed that deadline. You signed PJ Tucker with a little bit of space under the hard cap, and all of a sudden he gets a deal immediately. But this way, you go, you just put a little stop in the middle there and say, oh hold on, he actually thought about going to Houston. Mm-hmm. Oh, well, that's completely out of Maury's control. This free agent was clearly thinking about returning home. Um, so that's why it sort of stops it, because then the league yeah. doesn't go, oh, this was just Philly, 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 Philly. This was Philly, 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 a little bit of Houston. Oh, okay, that's too real, even though he ended up with Philly. Yeah, okay, I, I really like I like the point that you've laid out, and I definitely agree, now that I know what you mean by it. Um, but... But who cares? <laughs> like, who cares if oh, he took how- a pay cut to let, like, his teammate get signed? People fucking talk about how much of a legend Tim Duncan was for doing it. Yeah, and Kevin Durant for giving up $10 million with the Golden State Warriors so they can keep Sean Livingston and David yeah. West. Yeah. And then yeah, yeah, exactly. LeBron, right. Bosch, and Wade <laughs> taking $14 million instead of, what, 17 18 19 yeah. 20 whatever the max yeah. was back then. Yeah. Um, yeah, fucking let let the boys play. It's the best thing for the league. It's like it's, it's the best yeah. thing for the league for this to be the product. I I agree with you, but like Adam Silver cares. Yeah, who again? Shout the fuck out to Adam Silver. <laughs> I think he's been a pretty good commish. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, have you been? Have you watched the the Seventy Sixers lately? I think I did two days ago. Celtic Sixers. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Man, I, watched, I watched just bits and pieces. A lot of fucking a lot. A lot of cons- a lot of things to be concerned about as a 76ers fan. A lot of fan. in bed. A really bad game from the Celtics when they won. Yeah. Like, maybe they were getting to their stuff, the Celtics, but they were not fucking putting the ball in the goal. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And the Sixers, man, it doesn't matter. any At any point of the last, like, four years, if you t- turn on a Sixers game, it's exactly the same. Yeah. Super slow, give it to Embiid. Once yeah. the team's actually serious, they know how to contain it. Yeah. And it's like, all right, it's, it's, it hasn't worked this far. 
Um, it's just, it's so hard when people bring up the argument where it's like, oh, and Bede's better than Jokic, where it's like, exactly what you just said. As soon as it slows down, Embiid just gets stopped. Mm. Um, and Jokic is just like, is just so incredibly efficient. He's got so many counters. He'll play a game where he'll score eight points and have 14 assists, and then he'll just turn around and go, oh, fuck, I wouldn't mind 50 points today. <laughs> and yeah, it's also, just side note, Kendrick Perkins saying that Jokic is stat padding. Just, just the, the we most actually, stupid, let's stop, stop. We don't yeah, have to talk about that. Fuck, that's I got, so I got stupid. something I want to say about Nicole Jokic. I think he's actually better than we think he is. Yeah. Who's the owner, Kroenke? Who, yeah, like, hates yeah. the Nuggets and, like, doesn't <laughs> want to ever talk about them or um, broadcast yeah. their games. Yeah. And, you know, Embiid has these uh, these uh, like articles Embiid coming beats out. him 1v1. And, yeah, yeah, Embiid's always like, man, I'm better. Embiid has these like, articles coming out. LeBron injures his foot and then Shams writes it's miraculous that he finished the game yeah. no one's doing any press yeah. for Jokic yeah. and he's still the best player in the league year yeah. after year and now potentially after year yeah it has to, I mean it has to be his third MVP in a row it's looking like it and no one no one's gunning for it <laughs> like there is no it's just understood yeah and so I just think he's even better than we think he is yeah and he goes to the playoffs and he like Honestly, just could score 40 points in every mm. single playoff game. Like, he, Draymond Green was against him, and he looked flustered, but he still put up just incredible numbers. He was yeah. just on a very bad team. Um, the only time I've really seen Jokic, like, actually snap, and, like, you know, I don't think he cares about the press. I don't think he cares that Kendrick mm. Perkins actually said that. <laughs> but when he was playing against the Phoenix Suns, and he was, you know, they were playing without Jamal Murray. That was, that was the year that, you know, 10 games before Jamal Murray got injured yeah. and it's like oh damn this actually could have been the year they just traded for Aaron Gordon they were the best team in the planet for 7 games and then the ACL happens I think he actually got frustrated remember that time that he headbutted campaign <laughs> was it a he- no it wasn't a head was Sorry, it a he, 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 he smacked him on the nose no or he headbutted he went up and just like screamed in their face that's the one time I've seen yeah. him like actually angry yeah. um he got ejected that game? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And that was like his last game. It's like, fuck, that's just how he like goes yeah. home. Um, I think you're right. I think he is just better. And we like we, we don't we we don't know when he's like fully switched on, like can he average like 40, 10, and ten in a playoff yeah. series? Because he might actually he just like when he played the Houston Rockets the other day, he had fourteen points. Yeah. Because he did it because he wanted to win the game. He doesn't care about like going out and just hitting your thirty five seven season average. Yeah. Um <clears throat> thinking basketball recently had a podcast about LeBron. And they were saying that he was on track to becoming the first ever player to get 40,000 points, 10,000 assists, 10,000 rebounds. And I am not one for, oh, that aw- that record will never be broken. I think probably all of them will. Because yeah. They keep getting broken. And we're like, yeah. oh, this is never going to get broken. Yeah, yeah. Fucking... It's like um, like lunar eclipses. It's like, this is the first one in a trillion years and it's just next Thursday. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, I haven't, I haven't. Do you, ah, so the thing I was going to say is, do you think Jokic could be the first player to get like 30,000 points, 12,000 assists, 12,000 rebounds? I have no fucking idea what that <laughs> How the fuck do I quantify that? But yes, like, you know, he's he never misses games. Like, he's never injured. If he is injured, it's a wrist injury because he's like jarred it while doing something. It's never, he never has muscle injuries. He never has bone injuries. So mm-hmm. if he just keeps playing and keeps putting up like, yeah, 35, 12 and 12, I'm sure he can multiply that by like, 10,000. There's a way to figure this out that I should have done off air. But it's currently a little bit less points than LeBron and heaps more rebounds and assists. That's cool. Which is why yeah. but I should have I should have prepared this. But also, Jokic didn't get to get... You know, Jokic didn't get to the assisting until a bit later in his career. As yeah. In I mean, I, <laughs> I really think... I really hope Denver wins a title. Because, mm. like... If, mm. if if they don't win this year, the pressure is a little bit on where it's like, oh, can you actually win a title with Jokic as your, as your starting center? Um, and he puts in so much effort. Like against that Warriors series, he was hedging so hard. And against Steph Curry, it's hard because he can just pull up like an extra fucking five feet back. But against just normal guards, like let's, let's say they're in the finals against the Cleveland Cavaliers. I think he can actually do a fine job with Darius Garland and with um, Donovan Mitchell. And they've got all the beautiful pieces around them to make it work. It really seems like Michael Porter Jr. is like locked the fuck in on being the third option. And we were a little bit worried about the chemistry there. But it looks like everything's just going to work. Um, and everything is working. And then the one seed, just doing the playoffs. And it's going to be so much fun. Mm. 
Oh, man, the league better fucking pray he doesn't win a ring in Portland. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, fuck. Uh, I'm just going to read out these two pieces of news from Adrian Wojnarowski, ESPN, and I want you to say two funny comments. Okay, but just before that, uh, oh. on the Nikola Jokic 30,000, 12,000, 12,000 counter, if he averages 25, 10, and 10 over the next 10 years, playing 70 games a season, which I think is possible when you factor in he'll probably have a boost for over the next few years, and then he'll probably drop below that yeah. for the last few then he just sneaks in. Yeah, that's so hard. <laughs> that's so hard to do. That's, these these, so these records will never be broken. <laughs> so fair. Uh, all right, Will Barton is signed with the Toronto Raptors after a Washington buyout. Oh my God, man. Fucking hell. All right, next piece of news. <laughs> let, let him shoot. Um, Neil Noel has been bought out by the Pistons. Sad. Yeah, I, I thought he was good, but he it seems like injuries have held him back. And a $10 million contract was hard to trade. Yeah. Um, um, do you want to say something before we before we finish up? How old is Nolan's Noel? Twenty nine. Twenty eight. He was twenty six for a few years there, though. <laughs> That's funny. It took me a second. <laughs> Cheers, bro. No worries, mate. Uh, Lucas, thanks for coming on episode one hundred and eighty seven of the Deep Two NBA podcast. I'm Sean, your host, and with me, as always, is da- <laughs> Dante. Is not here, Dante. If you are actually listening to this on the plane home. Um, see you soon uh, Lucas I'll talk to you next time are you flexing for no, an audio I, only I, pod I was actually feeling to see if I had mozzie bites or pimples I still don't know what, I've, what I'm feeling on my right shoulder there they're, they're like chicken lumps you yeah know, chicken lumps you know that, that shit you get there yeah cool I'm gonna hit stop see you then If you look for PointsBet's stock exchange listing, you'll find a bucket of jargon and doublespeak as they're considered a, quote, wagering services operator, unquote. That's a corporate stretch for the colloquial friendly brogan or, hey, look, it's Chris Bosch kind of image they're sending off with their targeted advertising. I don't know about you, but take me back to the days when former pro sports players signed brand deals with hair loss clinics or Fujitsu aircons, not, quote, wagering service providers. If you're scrolling through your Facebook feed and you come across the two of our faces morphed into one, would that make you listen to our podcast more? I mean, if it does, let us know and we'll start doing it. But when I see a few NBA players' faces morphed into one, it doesn't make me want to pull out my wallet and donate some money to my local wagering services provider. The worst part is we're coming to accept it. Gambling ads are, sorry, wagering service provider ads are so ingrained in our sports and the way sports is delivered to us, it's almost impossible to avoid. Three quarters of Australian children aged between 8 and 16 years who watch sport think that betting on sport is normal and can name more than, well, one or more sport betting companies. When I was in school, I was struggling to remember Pokemon names and I'd be furious if I knew that brain power was being used to put towards wagering service providers and not them. The wagering service providers know exactly who to target. It's not okay to let them ingrain themselves in young Australians' minds. It's not okay to target people in the middle of a pandemic, and it's not okay for gambling companies to wield so much influence in the world of sports. To help kick gambling out of sport, use your voice and sign the petition at www.ngamblingads.org.au forward